Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Outer Diagnostics. Today, we're actually in the kitchen instead of the shop. Uh, I'm going to make one of my favorite traditional Russian dishes, Russian borscht. Now, this recipe, uh, it's kind of a mix of, you know, my grandma, my mother, my dad, uh, and then uh, my wife actually had some suggestions. So it's kind of a trial and error. Uh, this is what works best for, uh, for us. And it tastes amazing and it only takes an hour and a half to prepare. So there's no fancy, you know, wait overnight, cook this, cook that. It's uh, fast, easy, and uh, as uh, some of my friends have told me, it is the best soup they've ever tasted. So uh, I'm just gonna share with you how to make this and hopefully uh, you guys might uh, try it out and uh, I think it's a fantastic soup. It's a vegetable based soup. <clears throat> Very uh, um, I don't know, flavorful, nutritious and uh, just a kind of feel good food. So you don't, won't need any special tools for this. Usually I make a big pot. This is eight quarts and this lasts me and my wife for uh, about a week, so I never get tired of it. Uh, also, you'll need a big saucepan and just a uh, you know, spatula, wooden spoon, nothing, uh, nothing fancy. So the ingredients for an eight-quart pot of borscht, I use a pound and a half of chicken thigh uh, fillets. <clears throat> Again, uh, this is just a Walmart brand. Then I try to use all organic vegetables. We need a handful of potatoes. So if you buy a three pound bag, that's enough for two, <clears throat> two pots of soup. A big yellow onion. Get yourself some bay leaves for extra flavor. A big bunch of beets. Usually I put in three medium sized beets. Uh, bell peppers, so I usually put in three, orange, yellow, red, <clears throat> a handful of carrots, again organic, a whole can of crushed tomatoes, I see this is a 28 ounce can, some oil to saute your vegetables, my wife has been on this avocado oil kick so we'll try that today, you can just use regular vegetable oil if you don't have that. A head of green cabbage and if you want a little more zesty you can uh, throw in some sauerkraut. Uh, for sauteing the cabbage you'll need some uh, what is uxus? Vinegar, that's right, vinegar. <laughs> and then uh, the the secret ingredient here is dill uh, dill chips. So you know, a jar like this is enough for two pots of soup, so we'll use half a jar, the, uh, the brine and the pickles, and then some crushed red pepper for, uh, for an extra kick. So those are, those are the ingredients that you'll need, very simple. We'll start by uh, putting the chicken thigh fillets in the pot and filling it up half full of water, and uh, we'll start, start cooking. So the chicken will need to cook for about 40 minutes before moving on to part two, but uh, meanwhile we'll start sauteing the vegetables. So the whole process takes about an hour and a half like I said. So we'll start on the chicken first. Now you want to fill the pot to Go about halfway. Some of the water will boil out. Kind of like that. And we'll put it on medium heat. So once this comes to a boil, you know, we'll just let it simmer, so put it on medium-high for now. 
lightly cover it and uh, if you cover it completely it'll start boiling over and you know bubbling making a mess so I'll definitely have an, uh, a little vent there and then add some bay leaves so just take let's see this is a new container so take a few leaves here there you go three leaves that should be plenty throw those in so while the chicken is starting to cook we'll get to chopping all these fine vegetables We'll go ahead and rinse off your potatoes and start chopping those up. These you don't need to chop fine, just kind of cut them in halves and a couple times this way. These don't look too red to me, but. <laughs> They're supposed to be red. They're labeled as red potatoes. Hopefully not made by Gates with the, uh, um, you know, made in Japan, but not really. False advertising. I don't know, we'll take their word for it. I guess these are red potatoes. So once uh, we get all these potatoes diced up, We'll throw that in directly with the chicken. That way, you know, we'll make the broth and cook the potatoes at the same time. So it depends on the size of your potatoes, how many you're going to put in, and uh, it's kind of, you know, up to you if. You, Whatever vegetables you like more, put more of those in. <clears throat> There's no set, you know, specific amounts of, uh, of anything. You can't really mess up a vegetable soup, you know. As long as you put vegetables in there, you're, you're okay. So, let's see here. I should be using my... Uh, other camera for this. So dump them in. Now this will take a little while. Next step, we'll start on the sauteing. Next, take your big onion. Cut off the ends, cut them in half, then in half again, just to facilitate peeling. And you just want to get all the, the brown skins off of there. Oh, that's good. Some of these organic onions are so fresh they make you cry when you're Dicing them up, and that's a good thing. Definitely want to use you know the freshest produce available because better ingredients make better borscht, right? Is that what Papa John says? I think. So, again, these onions I usually kind of finely slice one way. like that, turn it around, go the other way. Alright, so 
that's there. One ingredient I did forget about is garlic. So this will add at the end. All you need is you know maybe three cloves. So this will actually add you know at the very end for extra seasoning. But for now. We'll get our saucepan ready here and let's try this avocado oil. We've been getting a lot of stuff from Trader Joe's. They seem to have a, a good selection of everything really. <clears throat> a lot of neat products. So this we'll just put on low heat for now and we'll turn it up a little later. Let's see, we want the high, large burner, low heat. Alright, so we're done with the onions. Now let's get to the beets. Now what you want to do with your beets is just break them off right at the little leaves attached. We're not going to use the leaves. Yeah, my wife's horses can take advantage of that. All we need to do is rinse these guys off. So this is, I guess, the uh, the quintessential Borscht ingredient: beets, cabbage, and carrots. That's what gives it the color. You know, the the red and orange color that the borscht is known for. So these guys again cut off the ends like so tomorrow is Valentine's Day so I don't make dinner very often but this is a good reason to do it right and I haven't had borscht in a while. So, let's uh, throw that stuff away. And now, I found the easiest way to, uh, to peel these is just to use a little simple peeler. So, just go all the way around. So you don't want any sand or dirt in your soup. So do that to all our beets and then we'll dice them. So once you have your beets all peeled, give them a quick rinse. Like so. Now we are ready to dice them and throw them together with the onions. So again, you don't need to have the pieces too small or too big, just kind of medium. So for example, if you have that, you just kind of little cubes, little beet cubes. <clears throat> So basically all this recipe is all the work is chopping up vegetables. It's a little labor intensive, but the steps are really easy and it goes by pretty quick. <clears throat> See the big one you can actually separate into three pieces there. jump out of your hand. Let's see. That's fine enough. Alright. Sweet. So 
let that sit there. We'll increase the heat a little bit on our onions. This is starting to boil. Awesome. So I'm going to let the chicken cook for about oh 15 minutes or so and then we'll proceed. Okay, it's time to add the beets to the onion. Every time you add something you can kind of stir it around. Mix it up. There we go. How's our chicken and potatoes doing here? Nice, nice boil. I turned the heat down so it's simmering. Uh, next up is carrots and peppers. Carrots, no need to peel them, just wash them really well. You can cut off the ends. Now each carrot I split into four quadrants and lengthwise. We'll do that for all of them. Chop up the whole pile. It's smelling good already. I'm getting hungry, so. By the time my wife gets home from work, hopefully, we'll have the borscht ready. So, the carrots. Dump those in. Oh yeah, that's, that smells real good. Let all the flavors mingle. It's gonna be a party in your mouth, I promise. Next up, let's do our bell peppers. Now the bell peppers, usually I just kind of split them in half. You just want to get rid of all the seeds in the middle. Rinse them out. And then just go to town, dice these up. Again, it's sometimes it's hard to get really flavorful produce in the winter time, but you know, I can do your best and get the organic stuff, pay a little extra, it'll be worth it because the whole dish will taste better. Not bad. So we'll put these in and then uh, keep going. Alright, we've got our yellow and orange and red bell peppers all diced up. Throw those in. That doesn't that look good? That is the brightest saucepan you've ever seen, right? Look at all those reds and yellows and oranges. You know it's good for you, right? And the last 
addition to that saucepan is going to be our crushed tomatoes. Now you could use fresh tomatoes, uh, but this is just easy and it kind of you know makes it gives it a little more juice. So just open that up. Dump that in there. Again, mix it up a little bit. We're going to let this simmer for a few minutes to get all the vegetables nice and soft. So, this is basically half the soup in the saucepan right now. We're going to combine the two parts very soon here. Let that simmer. Now when your dog comes over, you know it's time to take the chicken out of the pot. You ready Petey? Ready for some chicken? Oh, he's shy. Don't worry. He's not going anywhere. So now, the next step is to get some plastic tongs and get the big pieces of chicken out onto a plate here. The reason for that is uh, we want to break up the big chicken pieces a bit and then throw them right back into the soup. So instead of having whole chicken pieces, I like having mine kind of shredded and that way <clears throat> they'll just be you know little shredded chicken pieces all all in the soup instead of just five big uh, pieces of meat so those are on the table you can just take a take a fork and the meat should be very tender after it's been cooking for at least uh, about 40 minutes I'd say is a good amount of time. You can't really overcook it, it'll just get softer and more tender. But this is, uh, this looks very good. So just kind of separate the pieces. If there are any uh, little fatty pieces, those the dog loves those, so you can let's see. Give him a little treat. Come here, come here. Petey, the rat terrier, is 17 years old, so he's doing pretty well for his age. He's still very active and he loves chicken. That is his favorite thing. He will die for this. Come here, come here. Come here, come here. Did you drop it? Here you go. Mmm. Do you want more chicken? That's enough for now. <laughs> so, well, let's keep the chicken here. Now, you want to get a medium bowl, kind of like this. And back to our pot and get like half of the potato pieces out. Now, this what this will do is we want to make the soup a little creamier. And to do that, we'll take about half of the potato pieces in here and we'll just mash these up. So take 
take a little wooden masher and make mashed potatoes out of your cube potatoes. This gives a soup a little creamier consistency, which is always a very good thing. I love creamy soups. So this isn't a creamy soup, this is just a vegetable chicken broth based soup, but if you uh, mash the potatoes a little bit, it'll give it just enough creaminess to be that much better. Alright, so this is going back in our pot. Maybe I should do more cooking shows, right? You can actually use a tripod. Not too shaky. I always feel guilty when I'm in the field and, you know, get excited and get the camera out. And the video quality is kind of not the <laughs> not what I'm thinking about usually. Maybe I should be, but I'm thinking about the actual diagnosis and the camera is just kind of there. I do my best to, you know, get you guys good shots, but a lot of times it's it's hard, shaky, and but in in our case, it is the content that matters more. So we'll throw the chicken back in, mix it up. So you can see now the broth is creamier. But it still has some chunks in there, some potatoes, some chicken. Now we'll give the vegetables one more stir and then we'll combine the two in the big pot. Alright, let's uh Stir this up a little bit. You, don't, you definitely don't want anything to burn on the bottom. This is looking very appetizing right now. Let's say we got another 15 minutes of prep time and then we're ready to serve this. So let's let simmer for a few more minutes. Let's come over here and get our cabbage uh, on the cutting board. So, for our cabbage, rinse it off, take a few leaves off so it's all nice and clean, and then just kind of start going at it with the, with the big knife. What you should have left with is uh, is the middle, and man, horses love this. I mean, you can take out some leaves and eat it yourself. Mmm. Let's just cut this up a little finer. You can't have too much cabbage. Love green cabbage. Mm. I thought I had the big cutting board out. It's kind of spilling. It's okay. All right. Now we have our cabbage all diced up. Now we can transfer our vegetables into our pot. Mm -mm. Stir it one more time. I think we're ready for the transfer. Sometimes this can be a little tricky. Get some splashing, especially if you're making a big pot. So just kind of buffer the vegetables
made this soup more than once and it'll look like the pot is almost full here but we still have enough room for our cabbage and our pickles that's the key ingredient remember <laughs> so back to our saucepan This cabbage is going to fall all over the stove here. Put that in there. Alright. There you go. And here is where vinegar comes in. So again, we'll put it on medium heat. And this stuff right here gives it a nice zesty layer. So, oh, I don't know, a couple tablespoon or two. And yeah, a little bit more oil to prevent sticking to the bottom of the pan. Okay. Let's cover this, we'll let it steam, and we're actually getting pretty close. So let the cabbage sit on the stove, uh, you know, open it up, mix it a couple of times, so, I don't know, a couple minutes, mix it, a couple more minutes, and then we'll add it to our pot, and that is already looking pretty fantastic. While our cabbage is sautéing, let's get our pickles out. Open up that jar. You can use your your tongs to get the you know the ovals out, and you can put them in whole, but you can also cut them up into smaller pieces, so you get a homogeneous distribution of pickles in your soup instead of just big you know huge ovals and this will dump right into the pot sweet and then do a little a little more dicing here. Where's the knife? Here it is. getting excited here we'll add that right in see the pot is getting full so when I said it's going to be 8 quarts, it's going to be 8 quarts See how our cabbage is in here. Turn the heat down. If you let it, if you let it get away from you, it'll start getting a little brown. This isn't necessarily bad, but Don't let it go too far, it will start burning pretty easily. Alright. A little more, a little more vinegar in that, lower the heat, I'll just turn the burner off.
now. We're going to get our garlic. And break off one, two. I mean, again, if you're a garlic fan, you can use the whole dang thing. So it's the quick way here I found <laughs> to, uh, you know, get these things out of their shells is to pop them in the microwave for literally just a few seconds. So we'll say, you know, 30 seconds, and you hear them. There's one. There's two. Okay, that's really good. Careful, they're hot. On the cutting board. And they should slip right out of their, uh, see like that, out of their peel. One, two, three. Boom. When I was growing up, we didn't even know what a microwave was, but now that we have one, we kind of get used to it, you know, start taking it for granted. Like, oh, you want to reheat a cup of tea or a bowl of soup? No problem, just pop it in, no need to warm up the stove, put it in a, you know, saucepan. Need to peel some garlic? Pop it in the microwave. You can do a lot of things in a microwave. I think it was one of those inventions that happened by accident in some scientific lab <laughs> as many things are discovered. So let's see here. This is the final. Get you guys over here. Oh yeah. So we'll throw the garlic in here. Our cabbage is doing really well. And again, we're just going to put in as much as will fit in here. And it's getting close. We want to leave some room for mixing. We can always, you know, always, uh, you know eat that separately. And I also like to add some sauerkraut or uh, pickled cabbage. We get this at the local, we call it the Russian store. So that also gives the abortion a nice, nice little zesty kick. Oh yeah, I mean come on. Tell me that doesn't look amazing. So we're going to let this simmer for another, oh, even for like five minutes, just to let the flavors soak through. And I like to add a little crushed red pepper to the mix. Again, not much. It's a big pot. But you'll definitely be able to taste it. Winter's not quite over yet, so it's always nice to have a hot, little zesty, soup with a little kick to it to warm you up and that is that is looking really good I might add a little bit more of this cabbage here you can't have too much cabbage like I said you can't really mess this up it's all vegetables chicken broth that's it so we're going to let this simmer for a little bit, cover it, and then I'm going to show you guys my favorite way to serve this. I the ugliest clothes on today, but at least I was warm.
So now it comes time to serve the soup. Uh, I like to have mine with some sour cream and croutons. Again, completely up to the end user here, but uh, that's my favorite way to go. <clears throat> and again, you can't, you really can't mess the soup up. Nice big spoon of sour cream makes it creamier. Zestier, yummier. That is traditional Russian borscht modified recipe. So give it a try. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, Otherwise, thanks for watching, and have a good meal. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. See you guys next time.